you guys are all doing well. I just wanted to start off by saying welcome to Butching Out Mac May. And as that name indicates, this channel is where you will find everything Mac May related from DIY pattern tutorials to tips and tricks videos. So on that note, we are going to be going over a tip and trick video today on 10 useful tools that you want to have for Mac May. So some of these items are, in my opinion, must-haves, and some of them are nice-to-haves, depending on what kind of macrame project you are wanting to do. So I will go over each of these items in detail today and their primary usage in the realm of macrame, so that if you're just starting out with macrame, and you're not sure what other items you need other than some cord and a wooden dowel, then hopefully this tutorial will help answer some of those questions. If you are new to macrame, I have launched a macrame course that goes over in a structured video format the basics of macrame all the way through to creating your own stunning macrame designs. It is a comprehensive course that goes over 15 different macrame patterns from beginner to advanced level, as well as many different tips and tricks videos that are helpful to know for macrame. So if you guys are interested, please check out the link in the video description below. And with that, let's begin. The first tool and a very important tool is to have nice sharp scissors to cut the cord. I use a pair of durable craft scissors that can cut through many different materials including fabric and so it is very good when it comes to cutting cord. It can definitely save you a lot of time if you're cutting multiple strands of cord for your project. Not only are sharp scissors efficient and effective when cutting strands of cord to use for your project, it is also important to have sharp scissors so that you can have nice clean cuts when cutting French. If you are interested in learning some tips on how to cut fringe cleanly with nice clean cuts, you can refer to my How to Mac Ring Fringe video and I'll post the link to that in the video description below. The second very important tool is measuring tape. So this tool is very important to have when cutting and measuring strands of cord to use for your project. It is especially important as you'll need to measure out the recommended cord lengths from a tutorial or know how to measure your cord lengths if you're designing and creating your own pattern. So having measuring tape is super important. I use it on every single project whether I'm following a tutorial or following a pattern that I have created or I'm recreating a new pattern, I always need to measure out cord for my projects. If you guys are interested in knowing how to measure out cord for your projects, you can refer to my video tutorial on how to measure cord and I will post a link to that in the video description below. A third important tool to have is a very nice fringe comb. This is probably my favorite tool to use for macrame since that it is very durable and sturdy and it combs through fringe very easily giving it a nice fluffy texture. When I first started out with macrame, I used a plastic hair comb that I had in my home to brush through the fringe. And while it does the job, it's not the best and most effective way to comb through fringe. It also depends on the type of cord you have as well. If your cord gets tangled very easily, then having a sturdy comb, sturdy stainless steel comb like the one I have is super helpful in doing a better job at fringing. A 
A helpful tool to have for macrame is a crochet hook. So oftentimes we have to tuck in loose cord ends through the back of a macrame wall hanging or through this coaster that I've made before. And to do that, it really helps to have a crochet hook tuck those cord ends through the knots. It is also helpful to have a crochet hook to attach two separate pieces of macrame together. So for example, two parts of a clutch that you need to weave together, then it's helpful to have a crochet hook do that through the knots. Another helpful tool to have when you're cutting cord for your projects is to have a cord dispenser. All you have to do is place the spool of cord onto the dispenser and then take the cord end and weave it through the hole next to it. And then all you have to do is pull on the cord and the cord will stay nice and tidy and it won't tangle itself. Oftentimes I find when I'm just cutting cord Without the dispenser, my spool of cord rolls everywhere and it gets tangled very easily. A useful tool to have when you're trying to incorporate other accessories such as beads is tape. Oftentimes cord ends are frayed, making it difficult to thread through beads. And so if you take a little bit of tape and wrap the cord ends and then thread through the beads, it makes it that much easier. Sometimes we do make knots in macrame that might easily unravel or loosen up. And to make sure and prevent that from happening as much, you can dab a bit of glue on the cord ends so that it doesn't unravel. Alternatively, instead of using glue, you can use needle and thread to seal a knot and prevent it from untying very easily. Or you can use needle and thread to incorporate other beads and add-ons that you can't do so by threading the cord through. If you make a lot of smaller projects such as jewelry using thinner string or flowers or keychains, it is good to have a smaller work pad to work from. And what I like using is a cork board with pins. Using the pins, you can pin down sections of the pattern so that you can work off the cork board. I purchased this cork pad from a local craft store, which you can get fairly easily. If you guys are interested in knowing where to get them, I can post a link in the video description below. If instead you want to use some at-home materials, I have used a pillow before as my cushion to place the pins in to work from to make jewelry. You don't necessarily have to go buy a cork pad. I just found it useful to have one so that I can work from on a flat surface.
Last but not least, if you want to work on your project while it's hung up, and this is great for any kind of wall hanging, plant hanger, or macrame bag, then you will require some S-hooks to place onto a rack of some sort. Most people use clothing racks to hang up their projects. I have a photo backdrop stand that I use to hang up my wooden dowels or pieces of driftwood to work on my projects from. You can get a clothing rack for a fairly decent price and I'll post a link to that in the video description below. But alternatively, if you don't want to buy a rack right away, you can use a wall hook to hang up your pattern and work from there. So that's a wrap with our 10 useful tools to have for macrame tutorial. If you guys enjoyed this video and are looking for more tips and tricks or more DIY pattern tutorials, you can check out Patreon and that is where I will release an additional DIY and tips and tricks pattern weekly and monthly I will come out with a pattern ebook. And if you join our macrame mastery tier in Patreon, you will get all the cord and materials shipped to your door for a really, really great price. So if you guys are looking to advance your macrame skill set, or if you're just looking for more fun macrame projects to do, you can check out the link in the video description below for more details. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.